Hi, uh, my name is Corey Jenkins, and I'm with the Wyoming Telehealth Network, and we're creating this video today to, um, to briefly demonstrate some of the peripheral um, telehealth devices that are, that are available or can be purchased and be used um, at the patient location. And so um, these peripherals are just, again, just an example of what may be available and what is used, and Kevin Smith from Shine Regional Medical Center is gonna demonstrate some of those. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the time over to Kevin um, and let him talk about these peripherals. Thanks, Corey. So, um, Shine Regional has been doing uh, a lot of telehealth uh, over the years, but it's mostly been through the use of video with um, experts. In the last year or so, we've had the opportunity to um, uh, form a care alliance with Children's Hospital Colorado. And as part of that, um, in our neonatal intensive care, uh, where we're gonna we're doing some telemedicine between the two um, hospitals. Um, we selected um, a couple devices uh, that I'll demonstrate today that are just one of many that are out in the marketplace. Um, and the reason that we selected these particular ones was it matches the specifications that Children's um, already had invested in, and we wanted to be. Uh, completely compatible with uh, what they were using. Uh, today I've got uh, what's known as the horoscope um, from JedMed. It's a fairly common device. You'll see it if you go to any trade shows. Uh, they're, they're common in supporting a lot of uh, other platforms. These are This is a freestanding um, USB scope that has the ability to have uh, attachment lenses uh, and I'll demonstrate hopefully a couple, three of them. It allows the user to see what's going on on the video screen and then we can stream it live um, by uh, sharing the, my screen when we get to that point. As one of the uh, peripherals that we needed to uh, make sure we had available for our alliance with children's was an electronic stethoscope. Um, we obtained, uh, this happens to be the Echo stethoscope. It's um, the, uh, it's an electronic stethoscope. It has the advantage of uh, both being analog and digital. So it, you can take your original stethoscope that you may have on hand and just obtain the core piece, the cone, uh, or you can buy it pre-assembled. The, uh, the core piece um, is where it allows to pair the Bluetooth in the amplifying part of the cone with the Bluetooth in any smart device, um, iPad, iPhone, uh, any smartphone. They're also uh, about ready to release a a dongle for a PC so that you could add a, uh, you could also stream this over the PC. Um, so we, um, once uh, you're ready to use it, you just um, say connect to core and we turn on the digital part of the stethoscope. We have a green light, which indicates we've got a good pair. Um, so I had earlier sent um, uh, a uh, email invitation from the smartphone to Corey as if he was the receiving specialist at Children's to be able to see and hear what we're going to transmit uh, from the patient side to uh, my side. Um, hopefully we can do that where you can see it a little bit today. So it's on my Okay. Are you are you guys seeing it? It may not seem to have much um you could unmute me, Corey. Uh, we may not have we may not have a lot of good volume um, doing it quite this way. The best way that they recommend would be for the the receiving specialist to either have a stethoscope that he could hear through his ears, or most likely a good set of headphones is uh, how they recommend doing that. But um, as you can see, it transmits a and I'm talking, so it's messing up the signal there now, but. Um, it sends both the, uh, the wave pattern and the audio. Uh, we can also uh, record. Um, 
I'll shut this off now so that we don't get the echo. But in addition to transmitting the stream, I just shut it off so you get a flat line there. Um, we could we could just um, record on the device and then transmit the recording to the specialist on the other end as well at any point in time. Or we could introduce the recording into the electronic medical record. Um, so it's a, it's a nice flexible uh, scope. The other thing to know about it is in a technical term, they talk about in-band and out-of-band transmission from peripherals. This is an example of an out-of-band. Um, what that means is that we're we're sending this along a different channel uh, across the internet or whatever that's not using our video bandwidth. It's it's traveling to and from, so it's just one other consideration to think about. Let's go to the horoscope now. Um, again, the horoscope is a popular version of a, of a flexible scope. You basically purchase the handle. They've got a more modern one than this out now that's got an autofocus on it. But it has um, the handle and uh, then these interchangeable lenses that you can buy for a variety of purposes. Uh, today I've got, this is a, a dermoscope or a contact um, scope that also has a polarizing filter built on the side of it so we can attach it to the to the lighted handle but uh, and again this too can either stream which we're doing now through a usb connection or we can um, record on here and send some video later or we can also take stills with it it's uh, got a nice lighting system on it so in this instance corey if you could allow me to share my screen Okay, you should you should be good, Kevin. Okay, so I've got a third-party uh, device um, or third-party software on. Uh, as soon as I figure out how to share my screen here, can you help me know where to go there? Yeah. So once you hit the share screen button at the bottom, you should see if you have it open. You need to have it open. Okay. Uh, there I am. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, so now we'll show you some of my skin here. Um, this is the top, the top of my hand. Um, those are the hairs on the top of of my hand. You can see the magnification and the resolution on that. The flakes of my skin. <laughs> um, but this would allow. Uh, you know, a very good close-up of skin conditions. Uh, it would be also good for dermatology, wounds, um, a variety of uses for that kind of close-up. I've got a little scar here from a scratch. So quit moving here. But it's got the scale built into it and in centimeters. And so, you know, you can get a pretty good um, example of what it would be like to um, I've got you know a few different freckles there but that kind of gives you the idea that of how close you could examine skin for a specialist so let's uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and change this lens um, and we'll take off that dermal lens and uh, see if I can not totally gross you out, but give you an example of what the dermoscope would look like. This is the equivalent of a typical uh, medical office um, dermoscope. Uh, we've got uh, neonatal and adult tips uh, that would go on it. So now you're looking at the dermoscope. Um, see if I can get a focus on my ear, maybe. Oh yeah, there's my famous earwax. Everybody loves to see it. <laughs> but again, that's the hairs in my ear. Um, if I had a nurse with me that could um, actually apply their ability to use this, it wouldn't be quite so uh, difficult for me to hold it still for you to be able to see um, in my ear, trying to get 
So you could actually, you know, another big chunk of wax. Oh, I got a lot of wax. That's nice. <laughs> You know, if I had someone helping me to get in the canal, you could actually you could get the idea that you could see besides my earwax here. Keeper uh, into my ear, but that kind of hopefully gives you an idea of the, in a trained hand, you could really do a pretty good job with, uh, with this and, you know, up the nose or wherever you're used to using a dermoscope. You know, I got wax on the lens, so I'm just gonna take that off. <laughs> and this is just a general lens. Um, it, it could be used to, you know, look at the overall body or to present uh, a more specific, um, just general view of things. So, I mean, you can see more like a mobile video camera if you, if you get the idea there. Um, and the purpose would be again, you could you could do a lot of different things with just a general lens. It has some fairly good magnification as well, but nothing like the like the dermoscope does. Um, but if you were looking maybe at a rash, at a larger rash on the skin or something on a on a on a child or an adult or a larger wound, uh, that's a that's a healing uh, dog scratch. <laughs> um, there. Um, So that's kind of an example, and they do make other lenses for it. So I'll go ahead and click sharing here so we can go back and talk. Um, so they also have some pretty high power. Uh, they do make like an ocular lens that runs, it's fairly expensive, but it's one of the few on the market that's equivalent to, a, to an, um, an ophthalmologist's ability to actually examine the interior of the eye. It all depends on the lens. Um, but uh, with these two, um, and with uh, like a nurse on the uh, other end who's taking vitals to provide the, the staff uh, at Children's, and the regular camera that we're using to broadcast just our, our conversation today, um, it allows the, the far end specialist to see, hear, and, and understand fully what, what the, the patient on our end in Cheyenne is presenting with, and the idea being that um, if we can present a good picture in support of our pediatric, of our pedia, um, our pediatric specialist here, it allows us to expand the range of babies that we can keep without having to transport down to Denver. So mom and baby get to stay in Cheyenne. We support them by telemedicine. Um, we have the pediatric specialists, whether it's cardiology or, or respiratory or whatever, support from children's. And when they can see and hear and have a dialogue with the provider here, it allows our level two NICU to be able to extend its capacity of care um, in in a broader way because we're involving the specialists right there on the scene and everybody has a higher level of confidence that uh, a baby either needs to go or can stay um, and then coming back the other way maybe they can release a baby back up here to the family and unite everybody back in Cheyenne sooner because we can provide the support with the telemedicine and the peripherals so that's the idea okay well, great, Kevin. Thank you for that demonstration. So again, this video just kind of is uh, su supplementary to the the webinar that we performed that we did in October, which really kind of goes into the benefits of telehealth, what telehealth, some of the definitions of telehealth, and things like that. So we just wanted to to give you all a better idea of some of the other things that you can do with telehealth, um, as far as uh, from the patient side and getting and getting some of these peripherals. And again, there's a whole list of peripherals. Certainly, if you have any questions about it, you can contact uh, Wyoming Telehealth Network or Kevin. We're all part of the same partnership and group, um, and so we can kind of help you and, and, and try to give you some direction on that. So thank you all. Go ahead. Let me just add one, one quick note there. You know, we, I've only showed you a couple, but we've had, we've had some experience, and we've just re, uh, reinvigorated that experience with a small clinic in Farsing who basically obtained a full range of, of, as a primary care clinic, 
to be able to do. Uh, so she's got a, a digital stethoscope, a digital thermometer. She's got a 12K, 12 lead EKG. She's got the, the camera. She's got the ability to do um, blood pressures. Uh, everything that uh, it's got, she's got the otoscope and the ability to to have a doc uh, look in the ears and throw it of a, of a child that may need some antibiotic or sinus infection or whatever. So you you can equip everything that you need to do a full regular exam digitally if if that's what you need to do, or you can just do it in the uh, piece by piece. But um, if uh, if you're interested, uh, I would recommend the American Telemedicine Association's website, ATA, americantelemed.org. Uh, they're a long-standing organization, and they they uh, are a non-biased group of. Uh, there's about mm, I think 90,000 members, and they do a lot of testing and trials. So that's a good spot to also go and check out some information on some on the peripheral market area, but um, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to, to show what we're doing uh, at YTN, and um, hopefully we can use this knowledge to grow the adoption uh, in the state and the region. So thanks, Corey, for, for all that YTN does and uh, the opportunity to do this. Yeah, great, thank you, Kevin. And again, this just supplements, you know, these, uh, as Kevin mentioned, these, these things can run, um, I guess side by side or um, parallel to the Zoom platform or whatever platform you're using. As Kevin mentioned they're USB, um, a lot of them and can run independently of um, Zoom. And so you don't necessarily have to have peripherals, if, depending on the kind of telehealth you want to do. As long as you have the video conferencing platform, um, it's just what kind of patients you're going to be seeing and what kind of service you have on the other end. So on the patient's end, if you have nurses or other healthcare professionals that can take a lot of the vitals and do some of that stuff and report that to you, maybe you don't need to need to see those things. And so it's just really kind of up to how you want to do things, I guess. So, okay, well, great. Thank you. I hope that was beneficial. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it.